Have you ever thought about what happens when we die? An inevitable part of life, yet often shrouded in mystery and stigma. Yes, we're talking about death and dying. It's a topic many avoid, but one that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross bravely explored in her seminal work on death and dying. This remarkable book pulls back the curtain on a subject that, for many, remains a taboo. Let's delve into the pages of this enlightening book that tackles this often taboo subject. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, a Swiss-American psychiatrist, turned the world's attention to the subject of death. Born in Switzerland in the early 20th century, Elizabeth was a force to be reckoned with from the start. She was determined to become a doctor despite the societal norms of her time, which frowned upon women in such professions. It was a journey filled with numerous hurdles, but Elizabeth persevered eventually becoming a psychiatrist. Her career took an unexpected turn when she began working with terminally ill patients. Elizabeth was deeply moved by the lack of care and understanding these patients received. Their stories of fear, loneliness and despair led her to write On Death and Dying, a book that would change the way we perceive end-of-life care. Her interactions with these patients highlighted their emotional journey, which Elizabeth condensed into what we now know as the five stages of grief. Her experiences brought to light the five stages of grief, a concept that has greatly influenced the understanding of grief and loss. Kubler-Ross proposed the now famous five stages of grief. These stages, built from her observations and interactions with the terminally ill, offer insight into the emotional journey one undergoes when faced with the reality of death. The stages are not a rigid sequence, but rather a fluid progression that can twist and turn with the individual's personal experience. Our first stage is denial. This is the initial shock of the news, a protective buffer that shields us from the harsh truth. It's a stage filled with disbelief, where the world seems meaningless and overwhelming. In this stage, we might find ourselves thinking, this can't be happening. Next, we have anger. As the masking effects of denial begin to fade, the reality of the situation sets in. We're not ready, and it's not fair. Anger can be directed at anything, ourselves, others, even inanimate objects. It's a necessary stage of healing, allowing us to express the pain that denial could not hide. The third stage, bargaining, is a desperate bid to regain control. It's a stage filled with what-if and if-only statements where we negotiate with a higher power, fate or life itself, in a vain attempt to postpone the inevitable. Then we sink into depression. It's not a sign of mental illness, as one might assume, but rather a response to practical implications relating to the loss. Sadness and regret predominate this stage. It's a quiet stage, one of reflection and often loneliness. Finally, we reach acceptance. This is not a stage of joy or happiness, but one of peace. It's the stage where we come to terms with our mortality, accepting the inevitable with grace. It's a time of adjustment and readjustment, of finding a way to move forward. These stages, though not experienced by everyone or in a linear fashion, offer a framework to understand the complex emotions surrounding death. This framework, proposed by Kubler-Ross, has since become a cornerstone in understanding and navigating the labyrinth of grief. The book On Death and Dying has had a profound impact on how society perceives and handles death. It has not only altered the ways in which we approach the concept of death, but it has also fundamentally transformed how we deal with grief and loss. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's seminal work has had a significant influence on the medical field, particularly in the realm of palliative care. Before the publication of On Death and Dying, the terminally ill were often treated with a sense of detachment and clinical coldness. Kubler-Ross's book challenged this approach, advocating for a more compassionate and understanding treatment of those facing their final days. Her insights were revolutionary, promoting the idea that patients should be treated with dignity, respect, and empathy. She championed the belief that the terminally ill should be included in discussions about their care, and that their emotional and psychological needs should be considered just as crucial as their physical ones. This humanistic approach has since become a cornerstone of palliative care, influencing doctors, nurses, and caregivers worldwide. Beyond its impact on the medical field, on death and dying, has also greatly affected individuals dealing with grief. By outlining the five stages of grief, 
Kubler-Ross provided a framework that has helped countless people understand and navigate their own experiences with loss. She gave a voice to the often indescribable feelings of grief and helped to normalize the process of mourning. Her work has also encouraged open conversations about death, a topic that was once considered taboo. It has allowed people to express their fears, anxieties and feelings about death without shame or judgment. This open dialogue has not only provided comfort to those experiencing grief, but has also brought about a greater societal understanding of the complexities of loss. In conclusion, the impact of on death and dying cannot be overstated. It has forever changed the way we perceive and handle death and the way we support those who are grieving. Through her work, Kubler-Ross has helped millions to navigate the complex journey of grief and loss. So, why should we talk about death, you might ask? Well, throughout this video, we've delved into the uncharted territory of understanding death through the lens of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and her groundbreaking book, On Death and Dying. We started by posing the unavoidable question, a question often shied away from in polite conversation, but one that is as natural as life itself. We delved into the life of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross herself, a woman whose courage and curiosity led her to explore the most profound aspects of human existence. Then we navigated through the five stages of grief, a concept that has since become a cornerstone in understanding human reactions to loss. These stages, denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance, serve as a compass, helping us orient ourselves in the labyrinth of grief. We also reflected on the impact of On Death and Dying, a book that has not only revolutionized our understanding of death, but also reshaped our approach to life. It has given us tools to cope with our own mortality and the inevitable loss of loved ones. So why should we talk about death? Because understanding death and dying is a crucial part of understanding life and living. It's about acknowledging the inevitable, preparing for it, and learning to appreciate the beauty of existence. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's work reminds us of the importance of these conversations. Remember, acknowledging and understanding death can help us appreciate life even more. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep growing.